Um, have you all been getting into the Christmas spirit? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yesterday, Patrick and I went shopping at the mall, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. It was amazing because everybody we saw there was open and receptive, and their eyes were shining, and they were happy, and we were all there for the same reason. We were all there searching for things for people we loved. Everybody. And you could tell the difference. There was just a lightness, and uh, you know, we just see people looking for the perfect this and the perfect that, and you could just feel the love coming from them as they're thinking about the one they're shopping for. And it was probably one of the best mall experiences I've had. <laughs> and it was totally crowded and totally packed, but everybody was all on the same agenda. And that's what love does. It just opens us up for that energy. And while I was away from Patrick for a moment, making my way to the ladies' room, I was walking behind a, a woman, and I was so clear. All I could see was her boots and her hair, and it was like, this is a child of God. This is a unique child of God walking before me. And I started to see this vision expand that every single person, no matter what their size, shape, age, they're all aspects of God, and they're all learning something. They're here on the earth to learn something, to grow, to expand something. And I thought how wonderful it would be if we approached people in that manner all the time. Hi, how are you? What are you doing for God? What's, what are you learning? You know, What's your great life experience? You know, and it may be a multi-faceted answer, but what a wonderful way to look at all of the people. And it was so clear to me because everybody was in love. Isn't that miraculous? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, no matter where we are or who we are or what mission we are on as individuals, we are all children of God. We are all made of love. <coughs> we are all fed by love, and we thrive on love. Love is where we were destined to grow. So every year, we all talk about the Christmas angels who come close to the earth, and people have said, why don't the Christmas angels come all year long? Well, there's a special thing about the Christmas angels. They respond to the energy of when the first Christ came to the earth and our openness to receive. So the more we walk around with that open heart, the deeper they can come to touch us and to interact with us. So it is a very, very special time, and what a great year this is. We have this Sunday, and for many of you, this is your Christmas service. So many of you will be traveling next week, or are not attending, or staying with family. Some of you, fortunately, will be here for our candle lighting service. But we have this whole week to be open to the activity of the angelic realm all around us. So it's exciting. All right. Um, no matter what we do, it's all about love. And when we look in the New Testament and the Aquarian about Jesus' life, never did he say, celebrate my birth. I want y'all to remember when I was born, and I want you to celebrate it. There's only one thing that he asked us to do, and that was the communion, when he said, this do in remembrance of me. And that was for us to take in his consciousness into our bodies. And we do that. We do that once or twice a year where we take that cross of awareness into us. But somewhere down the way, someone said, we need to celebrate the day this great being came to the earth. We need to celebrate the birth of this first awakened child of God. And so they went back to the stories in Matthew and Luke. And you know, the birth story is only in Matthew and in Luke. And there are different stories. If you look at the story in Matthew, um, this is where we find Herod um, when the children, the threat of life, the wise men coming, and, and Herod killing males. In Luke, we have a totally different story. We have the taxation, and the women play a much more predominant role. And there is no Herod story, and there is no threat on the life of Jesus. But what we've done is we've decided to marry the two stories. And so we've married them, and this is the beautiful story that we've inherited, where we have all of the events playing their role in the story of Christ's birth. And it doesn't matter which event we look at, which scripture you look at, there's one theme that's common throughout the whole thing. 
The story of Jesus' birth is a story of heaven visibly interacting with earth. Heaven visibly interacting with earth. The angels, shepherds, wise men. There's a visible interaction, the protection. All right. We believe that all that happened, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We believe that there was a visible interaction of heaven and earth. Yet, in our world today, we don't look for that, do we? A visible interaction, heaven and earth. We don't go out and scan the skies and say, oh, I wonder if I can see the Christmas angels. You know, we don't look for these amazing interactions to occur. <coughs> We do trust in our hearts that God will work behind the scenes to make miracles happen. That's what we do trust, don't we? Mm -hmm. When we put our prayers to God, we put it up to God and we say, God, I know behind the scenes you can change all this stuff that I've created. Now, I'm not asking to see it. I'm asking for you to fix it. <laughs> so we have this great trust that God our Father and all the angels can work behind the scenes on our behalf. But we don't have the expectation that God's presence can become visible to us. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What was it in these visible aspects that heaven brought to earth? It was love. It was always love. When we see, sense, or feel love from our Father and Mother God, it is so great, so immense, so <laughs> pure, it moves through every thought, every emotion, every situation, every detail. It moves through matter when we feel it. You all realize that? Mm -hmm. It is so deep and so pure. It takes us all to a space of peace. And there's an exquisite peace when we're there. And we've all touched it because we're all here. <coughs> One time or another, we've touched that space of peace. This is a moment where love is greater than our problems. Take a breath. This is a moment when love is greater than our problems. When our Father, Mother God touches us in such a way that we know it's okay. You are loved beyond what you have created. You're, you are loved and what you are experiencing is not bigger than you. And we breathe that in and it's fabulous and healing, is it not? It is a love that transcends human conditions and it reminds us that we are spirit. And we have all been so immersed in our own problems, haven't we, that we've become totally overwhelmed by the, by the issue. We become so engulfed in what we are experiencing that we forget we created it and it's bigger than we are and all of our energy is invested in fighting it or remedying it or finding our way out of this bag we find ourselves in and we struggle and we struggle and we struggle and if we can open and take that one drop of love a meditation a healing session a prayer when we feel that one drop of love pouring into us and we feel, oh, okay. There is an absolute miracle that occurs. And the miracle isn't that your problem has now disappeared. The miracle is that you've now changed. That you now have pulled your power out of what you've been experiencing and back into yourself as spirit. And you remember I think I'm a child of God, and I think I'm here to learn something. I think I'm walking around learning something. So maybe this has something to do with that. Maybe I can navigate through this. Maybe I can find the treasure in this experience. It's no longer something I have to push through. It's something I can now simply experience. And we experience it as children of God. That beautiful peace that passes understanding. It is so great, and I know that we've all experienced it. You know, we've been counseling for 20 years, 20 plus years, 
and held the hand of many going through the most tremendous crisis of your life. And yet many of you sit here today, alive and well, happy. And 90% of the people that I have worked with, I could remind them of the crisis and they would have forgotten it. <coughs> because it's so much a part of their history now. It's done. But there was a moment when we feared that we were not going to make it. There was a moment when we feared that all of our creation was greater than we are. That moment was what was happening when Jesus was born. Mankind was in such a state of having forgotten. Do you know? Such a state of we don't know how to get out of this paper bag we've locked ourselves into. We don't know how to take the theology we've created and find God anymore. We don't know how to make this work for us anymore. And they were so locked in that moment of the outer was so much bigger than their spirits. That when Jesus Christ was born, the very energy of his spirit coming into the earth plane impacted. Because he brought that beautiful <coughs> And we all know, again, on our human level, when we, before we even begin to think about divinity, if you've ever held a newborn baby, been at a birth of a child, the minute they come into the world, there's a change. They bring a beautiful energy with them. And that, why do you think people get so excited over the birth of children? A new one has come. A new baby has come to bring their heart to us. And they're going to bring their talents and their energy, and we're so happy about that. But this one, spirit manifesting visibly, <coughs> can you imagine the impact of this one? A love greater than the problems of the earth. A love greater than the problems of the mankind at that time. And it was visible. A visible love. Jesus walked the earth his entire life as a visible aspect of heaven. And he always said, first, I am the first, not the only. He always said, everything I do, you can do and greater. He taught them to do what he did. First. The first visible aspect of heaven. When he was younger, before he began his ministry in Jerusalem, he met with the sages of the time. These were the sages of every known religion. And he was so brilliant, intellectually brilliant. He understood every theology. He knew how to shift it, change it. He knew the truth of it. And they asked him to take the divine thought that he had within him out into the world. And he meditated on it, and this is what he said. He came back and he said, no, I can't. He said, everything you've said is absolutely true, but I have to follow what my father, Mother God, asked me to do. And he tells them this. I have lost my will and that of holy breath, so I go my way to speak and act as I am moved to speak and act. The words I speak are not my own. They are the words of him whose will I do. Man is not far enough advanced in sacred thought to compre comprehend the universal church. And so the work God has given me to do is not building that church. I will build a model, a pattern for the church that is to come. And as a model builder, it, I will build in my native land, and there upon the postulate that love is Son of God, and that I am come to manifest that love, the model church will stand. All the wisdom he had, all the knowledge he had of God, of kingdoms, of the earth, of mankind, he chose to teach love. Because without love, what value is wisdom? And without love, how do we touch spirit? How do we touch our Father and Mother God? His entire life was that demonstration of love. The events at the birth was heaven visibly interacting with mankind, and there were two gifts that were given, peace and goodwill. 
When you feel the love of God, what do you feel? Peace. And when you feel that love of God, does God sit you then down and go, okay, now listen. You got yourself in a pickle. I want you to go back down and I want you to do A, B, C, D, and E. Did anybody get that? No. God says, I love you. Take my peace. Now go figure it out. You've got my love. You're not going to make a mistake. Go on down there. You figure, if you need me, I'll, I'll be your guidance system. Absolutely, I'll guide you. But you participate. You figure it out. Because love is the key. And is that not the epitome of goodwill to mankind? Peace and goodwill. Peace and goodwill. 